This is the life we're after. I'm taken care of. I'm good. My eternity is sealed. I have life in his name. I belong in his family. And I'm not waiting for anything more. As if God needs to do more, he's done enough. And he'll never do more than what he's already done in his son. It's amazing how thinking differently about Jesus and about others can radically change my life experience. When you truly understand the mind of Christ, it will blow your mind. His thinking is on a different level. If you've been struggling with living faithfully for God, this revelation will help you. See, this heavenly mindset of Jesus is available to all of us now. And once you start thinking like Jesus, you'll find yourself living a truly successful and abundant, satisfying life. A life overflowing with peace and joy. So what is this heavenly mindset of Christ? How do we begin thinking like Jesus more each day? And what can we expect God to do in our lives when we begin thinking this way? Let's jump into the scriptures. Because the peace, joy, contentment, satisfaction, sense of purpose that Paul is demonstrating and moving us towards, it's the result of living and thinking like a servant. Part of this whole thing involves being servant-minded, servant-driven, thinking like Jesus, so that his life practice becomes our own. And John 15, 11 tells us his joy will be in us. So this is all about a mindset of contentment. What do you think And then when those thoughts come into your head, again, we can't control what thoughts, what feelings arise, what impulses we have, but we can choose to do something about those things. Either we believe them and accept them and meditate on them and think on them and and fantasize, or, or we immediately disregard those thoughts. You're going to see that living in Jesus's power to face every situation like Paul says he's in prison and thinking like this, it's going to require us to think like servants. If you want to live empowered, you have to think like a servant. This mentality right here is the secret to contentment. This this thinking and perspective. So let me take you to Philippians 2 because Paul throughout Philippians has already described this way of thinking. It's the thinking of Jesus when he wraps a towel around his waist, takes off his outer garments, and begins washing the feet of his disciples. One of those disciples will betray him and be the reason that he's hung on a cross, handed over to the Romans. The other disciple is going to be the one that denies him three times. The other ones are just going to straight up abandon him. John's just going to kind of hang around, and Jesus washes their feet and loves them and serves them, even though, even though they're not going to give him reason to do so. So this is the kind of thinking now that promotes the kind of life that Paul is modeling in chapter 4. It says, have this mind among yourselves, which is yours, what? In Jesus. Even though he was in the form of God, he didn't count equality with God a thing to be grasped. And this is a almost like a direct Uh, allusion to the Genesis 3 story when Eve, she says, hey, the serpent said that I could be like God or equal to God if I reach out and grasp this fruit and eat it. So I'm going to reach for that equality with God. And Adam and Eve do so and end up bringing sin and death and destruction into God's good world. Jesus, on the other hand, being God alongside the Father in eternity past, emanating from the Father as his very nature and character, coming into a human body and putting on human flesh, Jesus decides, I'm going to leave my glory. I won't stop being God, but I'm going to lay aside my glory and everything I have in eternity alongside the Father, I'm going to let go of that, those divine entitlements, and I'm going to take on the form of a servant. And I'm going to be born in the likeness of men. So it, the, it's addition by subtraction. Um, he adds to, or rather subtraction by addition. There's a sense in which he's being lowered by taking on a lesser form and embodying a lesser form. Being found in human form, he humbled himself by how? By becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. 
So this mindset that Paul is imitating and Paul is modeling because Jesus is the ultimate example is a mindset of sacrificial humility. It's the mindset of a servant. It's the mindset of I am preferring others above myself. I'm not reaching for equality with God, but I'm being content in Jesus with my station in life. And some of you, just like me, it is very, very hard for us to be content with our station in life, with our allotment, with what God has just allotted and our portion in this life. It's hard for us in the flesh to be content with that. But Jesus models how that's possible. This is the mindset. This is the way of thinking that if you want peace constantly, joy constantly, it doesn't mean you'll never experience uh, inconsistency in your feelings, but you can at least have a sense of joy and peace and contentment and satisfaction that's rooted in Jesus by thinking like this, a servant. It's amazing how thinking differently about Jesus and about others can radically change my life experience. Philippians 3, Paul says, not that I've already obtained this, resurrection, glorification, he's not obtained that. Not that I'm already perfect, right? But I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. It's as if Jesus laid aside his divine entitlements Instead of reaching for what Satan was offering in Matthew 4, Jesus reaches for the cross, for the joy set before him. And so by taking on the cross, he's reaching for us to make us his own. From our vantage point, that's a silly decision. right? You would leave glory, let go of that, to not reach for something better, but to reach for something that is nothing more than a creature of the dust made in God's image. And yes, we're made in God's image, but are we worth Jesus leaving his glory? Am I inherently worth that? I wouldn't say that's true, but I would say that God has chosen to value us to that degree, even though inherently I am not that valuable. I am not equal to the life of Jesus I'm not. Hey, if you don't know me, my name is Jason, and I have some free gifts for you on our website at abovereproachministry.com. Maybe you want to learn how to study the Bible. We have free Bible classes just for you. Are you maybe a newer believer? Go ahead and check out our Christianity 101 Foundations course. Maybe you hate videos. Well, we have a podcast, so you can listen to all of our messages on whatever podcast platform you prefer. Maybe you want to join or start a discussion group. Check out our map of all the current armed discussion groups all around the world. And do you maybe live near Greenville, South Carolina? If you do, you should check out our church. Visit movementchurchsc.com for more information. And if you'd like to partner with us financially, you can snag a copy of my book, Fruitful, or head over to the donate page and donate through debit or credit card, PayPal, Cash App, Venmo, Patreon, or even mail a check to P.O. Box 509 Inman, South Carolina. And if you want to make a ministry connection, feel free to reach out to me on our website. All right, I know that was a lot, but I'm done. So let's get back to the video. But Paul says, brothers, I don't consider I've made it my own. One thing I do, though, as I forget what lies behind, straining forward to what lies ahead. So just as Jesus, right, re- not choosing not to reach for something, but reaching for the right things, Paul's saying, I- I'm straining and reaching for what? Resurrection, glorification. That's what I'm moving towards. I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Jesus. So if you're mature, think this way. So, so Jesus has made us his own. We are his prize. That baffles me. He considers us the joy set before him as he's enduring the cross. We are the prize. We are what he's after. And this mentality that we now have in response to that work is that we're sure of our salvation. We are sure our names are written in the book of life. We are working from life, not working for life. And part of that involves we are forgetting the things of our past. We're not living in our past failures and our sin and our successes and our achievements and what was, though I want to frequently remind myself of where God brought me out of, like Ephesians 2 says, I'm not living in that. I'm not stuck there. We're moving forward. 
towards resurrection and glorification. That's the mentality of a servant is all of this service is not for nothing. I'm moving towards something. I'm not achieving that. I'm guaranteed that it's already mine. I'm just making progress towards it until he calls me home. That's the mentality of a servant is that there's more God has offered us and that involves letting go of certain things. You will have to make sacrifices in this life. You will have to let go of your own life and say, you know what I value more than my own life? God. That's a hard place to be, but you can get there by seeing how worthy he is. So we're reaching. Verse 19 through 21. Don't have your mind set on earthly things like these people whose their glory is their shame, their God is their belly, their end is their destruction. But our citizenship is is in heaven. And from it we await Jesus, a Savior, the Lord Jesus, who will transform our lowly body to be like his glorious body by the power that enables him to subject all things to himself. So our minds are not set on heavenly world, are, are, are not set on worldly material things of this life. Our minds are set on heavenly things. Which means I'm rejoicing that my name, our names, are written in the book of life. I'm living and thinking as a citizen of, of heaven. I, I'm thinking as one who belongs to God. I'm, I'm thinking as someone who doesn't belong to this world, but I belong to another higher kingdom. I'm living and thinking like life is really, what God offers eternal life is beyond this world and is after death. And I'm just waiting for that. I'm not sitting but I am awaiting and expecting Jesus to come back. And in the meantime, I'm living like he's coming back. I'm living like this is not my home. I'm living like a foreigner here. I am a stranger. We are aliens here. And I'm anticipating his glorious return where he's going to resurrect and glorify us. So that heart of service, this mentality of service is linked to that. This is what alleviates a lot of stress and worry. Why do you think Jesus in Matthew 6 talking about anxiety, says, look, seek first the kingdom and his righteousness and all these things you're worried about and freaking out about and wondering if they'll work out. Everything God knows you need, he will add to you. That's the promise we have. That's that's what we're guaranteed. We're not hoping. It's not a maybe. It's an absolute guarantee. And we ought to have a standard for our thought life again. Think like Jesus. Live like a servant. See other people as more more, uh, worth your time than you are. Like you prefer others above yourself. You don't belittle yourself. You don't think less of yourself, but you think less about yourself. And you don't see people as pawns in your little game. You don't see people as as tools you can use to accomplish some end. You don't see people as existing for your pleasure. You see your life as a tool you can use to make other people's lives better. That's the mentality of a servant. That's why Paul in prison can say what he does. He just sees his life as a tool in the hands of God to bless and benefit others, even if it comes at his own expense. And this is the mentality of Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. Jesus yields himself over, surrenders himself over to a good, generous, loving Father who cares for him. He trusts that the Father will care for him. He doesn't take matters into his own hands as as if he doesn't need the Father. He doesn't overreach and take the bait when Satan offers in Matthew 4, I'll give you the whole world. Jesus trusts God to set the pace for his ministry and life. And when it's time to die and obey, he's willingly laying down his life for the joy of his prize that is his people that he rescues from sin and death. This is the kind of life we're made for. A life of sacrifice. 
Like that's, that's a life. If you want a life that's characterized by joy and peace, this is the life we're after. Serving others, preferring others, surrendering for others, giving up, letting other people benefit at my own expense because I so trust that God has me. I'm taken care of. I'm good. My eternity is sealed. My, he, I have life in his name. I belong in his family. And I'm not waiting for anything more. As if God needs to do more. He's done enough. And he'll never do more than what he's already done in his son. Hey, if you enjoyed this clip, you might want to check out the full video right here, as well as another teaching that YouTube selected just for you. Don't forget to like this video to help us reach more people and subscribe for more biblical content just like this. And thank you so much for partnering with us financially to make this global ministry possible. Our mission is to move people towards Jesus by teaching them how to read the Bible so they can live and teach the Bible themselves. Be sure to check out the website and keep moving towards Jesus. I'll see you in the next video.